Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished doing almost all the problems from this book. If there is any problem at all that gives you trouble, that gives you difficulty, and if you wish to watch the solution to the problem, you will find the solutions to almost all the problems from this book, from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book, by the way, happens to contain the exact same problem in most cases, and appearing on the exact same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from this book, in the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. From day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are still a big chunk of the exam. They are a very important part of the exam. Unfortunately for us, unfortunately for us, the newer books that I just showed you, the revised GRE books, do not provide us with enough practice problems. To get some additional practice, from day number 401, we began solving quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Right now, we are on page number 328. Please turn to it. Page number 328, problem number 13. The problem is already on the blackboard, but before we get going, and before we, start, before we begin the solution to problem number 13, I just want to make one quick comment, something that I forgot to point out yesterday. In yesterday's video on day number 454, we did problem number 12 and we did two more additional problems, two more bonus problems. But throughout the entire video, I forgot to point out that those three problems that we did yesterday are very similar to what you will find on day number 312 through 315. And the original solutions tend to be a little bit slower, they tend to be a little bit more in-depth. So if you need more help, watch this video from day, day number 312 to 315. These are the exact same problems that appear that appear on page number 326 and 327, page 326 and 327 of the second edition and of the first edition. As I said, almost all the cases, the page numbers are the same, the questions are the same. Okay? So if you if you need some more help, there are videos there, 312 to 315. So here's the problem. I'm going to read the problem to you, then I'm going to shut up, I'm going to get out of your way. I'm going to give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. I would like you to solve the problem yourself. Once you have the solutions, then compare your work against the work that we'll do together in a few seconds. So here's what the problem says. It's a geometry question. Uh, number 13, about half the people got it right, 50%. We are told that point S, which is not shown, and actually this is, this is exactly how it appears in the exam, in the parentheses they tell you that it is not shown. Point S, which is not shown, we are told, lies above the x-axis. So somewhere, somewhere here, or above the x-axis, point S lies, such that the triangle RST, such that triangle RST has the area of 6. What we're being asked to compare are, is, uh, are the coordinates of point S and the x-coordinate of point S and the y-coordinate of point S. One more time, point S, which is not being shown here, but we are told that point S, point S has to be such that the triangle that we're going to form, R, S, and T, has to be such that it has to have an area of 6. And then we're being asked to compare the x coordinate of that point, x coordinate to point, eight versus point S versus the y coordinate of point S. I'm going to be quiet now. Okay, here we go. How do we find an area of a triangle? Pretty straightforward, simple question. Area of a triangle, as we know, area of any triangle is simply one half base times height. Well, we already know the base of this triangle. The base of the triangle is this is point R and this is point T. So the base of the triangle is from here to here. The base happens to be 4. And we know the area has to be equal 6 because we are told it has an area of 6. So 6 has to equal 1 half times base, which we know is 4, times the height, let's call it edge. 2 is going to cancel out with the 4, we're going to end up to 2 here. So 2h equals 6, which means the height of the triangle that we're looking for, the height of the triangle that we're looking for has to be 3. 
any triangle with a height of 3 and a base of 4. One more time, any triangle with the height of 3 and a base of 4 will do the job. We'll have, we'll have the area of 6. So here's 3. 1, 2, 3, here's, here's our... This line that we have here, y equals to 3, point S can appear anywhere on that line. Point S can appear anywhere on this line. So watch what happens. And of course, it has to be, it has to be from here, and could, a triangle might be like this, as long as it ends here, could be here, or it could be, it could be, we could have a triangle like this, a right angle triangle, or we may have something like this, another right angle triangle forming like this, or we may have something like this. We are told that it lies above y-axis. So it could very well be here, it could be something like this. We can continue here and it could be very well like this. This last triangle, I'm going to put it in a different color so you can see it, also has a height of 3. This, thing, this blue one that we have here, it has a height of 3. This triangle has a height of 3. The triangle looks like this. It has a height of 3, it has a height of 3 and a base of 4. And therefore this will have the area of 1 half base times height and it will have an area of 6. As you can tell, as you can tell, there are infinite, as you can, as you can tell, there are infinite different possibilities for point S. Infinite different possibilities. All of these are point S. All of these points that we see here, these point, this is point S, this is point S, this is point S, this is, this, depending on how, how it's sitting. The y coordinate is very simple. The y coordinate of point S has to be 3. This has to be 3, but this is a question mark. This is an unknown quantity. This cannot be determined. And therefore, we're comparing some quantity which is unknown versus some other quantity. It doesn't matter what the other quantity is. The known quantity, even though you know it, it really doesn't matter. Because how can you compare it with something unknown? The answer is D. The answer is D. The x coordinate of the point S is unknown. There are infinite different possibilities for point S we can sit. And all of these triangles that you see, they will all have the area of 6. Because all of them have a base of 4 and a height of 3. Do you understand? This is number 14. Question number 14. Number 14 is the penultimate problem. Let's see what it has to say. Number 14, when it appeared in the exam, only about a third of the people, only a third of the people had luck with it, two thirds of the people missed it. Here's what we have. Column A and column B. In column A we have 10 raised to 5, 10 raised to 5, over 5 raised to 3, over 5 raised to 3, versus 2 raised to 5 times 5 raised to 2. 5 raised to 2. Again, it's very important that you do it yourself, as I've told you many, many times in the past. That's how we learn, by doing it yourself. You are not going to get anything out of it by staring at the screen, sitting there passively. Pause the video right now. Solve it yourself and then compare your work against the work that we will do together in a few seconds. Do you understand? Well, here we go. The first thing we have to do here is the fact that we have something in the denominator. I hate dealing with fractions. I abhor them. I detest them. I do not like dealing with fractions at all. Whenever I have to compare two fractions in the two columns, my uncontrollable urge is to get rid of these things, anything that I see in the bottom, either here or here, or both, get rid of it. How can we get rid of 5 raised to 3 from here, from the bottom? It's very simple. Multiply both columns by 5 raised to 3. Multiply this column by 5 raised to 3. Multiply that column by 5 raised to 3. Now we don't have to worry about the bloody thing. It's gone. And here we just have 10 raised to 5. Let's see what we end up here. Here we have 2 raised to 5. And here we have 5 raised to 2, 5 raised to 2 times 5 raised to 3. 5 raised to 2 times 5 raised to 3 is simply 2 plus 3. It is simply 5 raised to 5. So 5 raised to 5 times 2 raised to 5 can be written as can be written as 2 times 5 raised to 5. 
But of course, 2 times 5 raised to 5 is just 10 raised to 5 is equal. The answer is C. The answer is C. Let's do the next one, number 15. Number 15. The very last problem in the section there. Number 15. I don't have a percentile written for it. Blast it. Just give me one second. I have to look it up. Oh, I can't believe I... Just give me one second. Okay, I'm going to look it up right now and tell you. Number 15. I'm sorry, I should have, I, 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 it was permissive of me. Section number two, number 15, 29%. Just write it down. 29%. It's very important to have this information because that's how we gauge, that's how we gauge our performance against uh, people that you're going to compete with. The percentile tells you how difficult it is or how difficult it was perceived by the people, you see? Here we are told that R times S, R times S does not equal to zero. That's the first thing they tell us. What we're being asked to compare is R plus S squared versus R squared versus R squared plus S squared. R squared plus S squared. That's it, I'm gonna be quiet now. I'm gonna give you five seconds. So do it yourself and then we'll compare your work against the work that we're going to do together, okay? Here we go. Okay, here's what's going on. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to open this thing, which is going to be r squared plus 2 times r times s plus s squared versus r squared plus s squared. We see r squared on this side, we see r squared in this column. Let's subtract r squared from both columns. If we subtract r squared from both columns, r squared drops out. Let's subtract s squared from both columns. s squared is going to drop out. Here we are left with a big fat zero. And in this column we are left with two times, two times r times s. How are we going to compare two times r times s? Well, there are only few possibilities. There are only, there are not infinite possibilities. There are few possibilities and we're going to look at both of them. Either, either both R and S, either both R and S are of the same signs, which means either they are both positive or they are both negative. So keep listening. If they both have a two, two we don't have to worry about, two is a positive quantity. If R happens to be positive and S happens to be positive, if R happens to be positive and S happens to be positive, this quantity is going to equal, equal positive quantity, which is going to be greater than zero. So in this case, the answer is going to be A. In this case, the answer is going to be A. Another possibility is that they are both negative. Two of, again, two is just two. Two is, two, two is a positive quantity. Two is going to be a positive quantity. And if R happens to be negative and S happens to be negative, again, negative times negative is positive. Positive times positive is positive. This is going to be positive. And again, the answer is going to be A. Because po any positive quantity, doesn't matter what that is, doesn't matter what the positive quantity turns out to be, a positive quantity will always be more than a zero. So if they are the same sign, if they are the same sign, the answer is going to be A. But if they are the opposite sign, let's do it here, the opposite sign, 2 times R times S versus, versus 0. If they happen to be of the opposite sign, then let's find out what happens. Again, 2 is a positive quantity. If R happens to be positive and S happens to be negative, then positive times positive times negative is going to be negative. It's going to be equal to negative, And negative is going to be less than 0. In which case, the answer is going to be, answer is going to be, B. That's it, we are done. Here we are getting A, here we are getting B, we are getting conflicting answer, the answer is D. But of course we are going to finish it up. Another possibility is that again 2 is positive, maybe R is negative and S is positive. So it's very simple. If they both happen to be of the same sign, if they are either both positive or both negative, the answer is going to be A. But if they happen to be of the opposite sign, if one is positive and the other one is negative, the answer is going to be B. The answer is going to be B. 
And since we cannot determine what it is, because we have no way of knowing, only thing we know is that their product is not equal to zero. That doesn't tell us anything at all. That doesn't tell us anything at all as to, as to what their value is. Maybe they are both positive, maybe they are both negative. Maybe the one is positive, one is negative. In all the cases that we talked about, the product is not going to be equal to zero. But here it is A, there it is B, and therefore the answer is D. That's what they're looking for. And that's going to come only through practice. That is the reason why I decided to do this 70 videos, 70 extra videos after I finished doing uh, first edition and second edition. We could have very well stopped at day number 400. But I realized that uh, quantitative comparison questions are very tricky questions. And they're tricky because we are not used to these kind of questions in our daily lives, in our school years. We never came across problems like these. So we need some practice. And the books do not provide us enough practice. That's what this is. The more you do of these questions, the better you will get it. It's just like anything else in life. Make sure you watch from day number 401 through the entire series. As I said, the series is going to end at 470. I'm, I'm going to close the video here. But before I do that, again, since I brought it up, this, this, book, contains, this book contains seven exams seven exams and we take 10 days to finish one exam and therefore there are 70 videos altogether right now because this is going to, this series is going to end at 460 which is going to be the end of the sixth exam we are right now in the penultimate exam there is one more exam to go which is going to be from 461 to 470 do you understand make sure you watch all of them i'll see you tomorrow okay bye now